Hello one and all, I am Pal of Games and welcome to a deck profile for uh, Silent Hunters which has uh, changed since I uh, did my deck profile of Hunters there's been a few little changes here and there and uh, some for the better, I mean I, I think it works a lot quicker now uh, but it's totally up to you whether you uh, agree with that idea if you want to suggest uh, changes in the comments below feel free to do that and uh, without further ado, let's get underway. So for monsters, we want two Tragodia, one Black Lust Soldier, one Thunder King Ryo, three Thunder Seahorse, three Violon Prism, three Mahundas, three Par Hunders, one Honest, three Sis Hunders, two Tour Guides, one Maxi, two Effect Veiler, one Day, uh, and that's the monsters, one Day of Peace. One Mind Control, three Rank Up Magic, Numeron Force, one Dark Hole, three Upstart Goblin, and three Recycling Batteries, and for Traps Room, three Raw Decree. So, to go over choices and why the choices are there, and so, uh, so on and so on, let's uh, sort of go in depth onto the cards and why they're there. I feel Tragodia has a nice wall early on, especially if you're going for a Thunder Seahorse play early on. You're not going to be wanting to bring out their monsters, because if they're there for X season, if you can't special summon, then they're kind of dead to just be on the field. So Tragodia makes for a perfect card for a little blocker. You can also change his level, obviously, to a 4, so he's nice in that respect. There's just so much versatility with Tragodia, which I really love. It's a dark, so it works nicely with BLS also. And I just find it to be a really nice card in general. Moving on to Blacklust Soldier, it's pretty uh, self-explanatory. Blacklust Soldier, it's just a, such an overkill card. It's worth playing when possible. Uh, Thunder King Ryo, I like it a lot. I feel it's so good against so many decks. And it just gives you the upper hand. As well as that, obviously, it works with the deck as it is anyway. Because, obviously, it works on level 4 Light Thunder. So, it's perfect to run anyway. So, you might as well run it. Uh, free Thunder Seahorses. This is going to give you so much uh, support in terms of giving you them cards you're looking for to set up them big plays. It's such a nice early on card. Uh, it's obviously a bit negative that you can only use one per turn and that you know you, can only, you can't special summon that turn. So it makes it a little awkward to play around. But with stuff like Tragodi it makes it quite easy to be able to set up different plays in order so that isn't an issue. Regardless, I'd say Thunder Seas Horse is worth playing no matter what because of the uh, bonuses you're going to get from it. You get so much card advantage, you know, your opponent just ends up in a position where they're not able to get over that uh, deficit you've created with uh, pan power. So, uh, moving on, Violence Prism, it's a nice card, I've got to be honest. Uh, it's there mostly to give you a few synchro options. Uh, you can also uh, sign in an option which I'm going to tell you about uh, later which is lightweight tuning. But I just feel that I like heavy monster support with this deck because it's a deck what needs it really rather than a lot of decks which some prefer more spells and traps. I feel this deck definitely uh, is more monster heavy. Moving on the engine of the deck which is the Hunders which is 3 Mar Hunder, 3 Par Hunder. These cards are going to be uh, the cards which allow you a second summon. On the t uh, when you summon them, you can once per turn summon another level 4 Light Thunder. And basically, since everything in your deck mainly is level 4 Thunder, you're going to be able to go into them nice uh, rank 4 plays, into uh, stuff like Silent on his Arc Knight, which is the whole point of the deck. And it's such an overpowered card, but with c in combination with the Hunders, just makes some powerful plays. Uh, Honest is pretty self explanatory, it's a uh, it's a light deck, so you're going to be wanting to play honest. Uh, free Sis Thunder, this is a really nice card the deck has, which is when it's summoned, you can target one level 4 light in your, with 1600 or less in your graveyard and banish it, and then during the end phase, you get it back. So it's another plus for the deck, uh, and it really makes some nice plays in terms of being able to go into that rank 4 and having another Hunter play for next turn as well. It really makes the deck so overpowered that what you can do with it is on quite crazy really uh two tour guide from the underworld i feel this is a really nice card to play not only because it's a dark and it helps with the, uh, the bls but i just feel it's a nice early on card for wind up zen mains allowing for some really nice uh rank free plays 
in terms of the uh, rest of the deck. One maxi uh, allows for a nice draw power for the early on game when you may not have the cards you're looking for in order to uh, create the uh, necessary uh, rank 4 plays that uh, are needed in order to uh, create the uh, overpoweredness of cards like Silent Honors, Dark Knight in the end, which is the whole purpose of the deck to begin with. Uh, to affect really these, these are just self-expansion really, you want these in order to create the uh, stop power from the opponent so that they're not able to kick off what they're looking to do early on because this is a deck what uh, relies on uh, a few turns in to be able to really kick off and be able to make stuff happen most of the time, I mean sometimes you can get them early plays but it's unlikely most of the time Moving on, uh, for spells, one day of peace, I thought this was just a nice card for the early on game where you may not have what you want or you may have just played a Thunder Seahorse so you're kind of not wanting to sort of uh, play anything because you're just not going to be able to make any big plays so one day of peace just made so much sense to me in terms of the draw power obviously the opponent gets to draw out it so it's a little negative but it means that your opponent can't really do anything until your next turn, so it really makes some nice plays in that respect. Uh, mind controller, obviously uh, level 4 is really, uh, most common, I would say, card people are going to have in terms of level monsters. So you're going to want to play it, as well as obviously you can make a huge play and then just mind control their monsters so that they're not able to stop the uh, direct attack for game. Free rank up Numeron Forces. These are here basically to turn your Silent Honors Knight, Arc Knight into a uh, Silent Honors Dark Knight, which becomes an overpowered card in itself. And basically, once you get this card out, your opponent's just going to have such a hard time trying to uh, take it out. Dark Hole, pretty self explanatory. All Start Goblin there for uh, consistency, uh, helps the deck just thin out a bit quicker. I don't. I do find that sometimes it's a pain to obviously give them that thousand, but in a deck like this, it really doesn't matter because once I sign on the start, like it is out, it's just so hard to come back from it. Free recycling battery. This is like the star card of the deck. This allows you to just keep recycling through your hunters and just keep making them rank four plays, and it's just so annoying. I mean, if they just got over one sign on this night. Uh, and they're feeling pretty good to know that there's another one coming the next turn really is annoying and following the free just raw decrease because I don't play traps a lot I found that it's kind of not needed but definitely uh, consider uh, using raw decrease just to uh, have to know that you you don't really need to bother with that and you can always side them out if you're playing an opponent who's obviously not playing a trap heavy deck like, say, for instance, uh, Dragon Rulers, they don't tend to play a lot of traps. Saying that, though, uh, the Silk Mode version is obviously uh, quite reliant on that uh, s that uh, Silk Mode Activate play, so you can try and kind of catch them out there in that respect. So, uh, that's going over that. Let's go over the extra decks slightly. Uh, Crimson Blader, uh, Scrap Dragon and Stardust Dragon for the uh, Synchro plays. Pretty self-explanatory plays, really nothing out of the ordinary pretty uh, standard. Uh, for the XYZs we've got uh, one wind up Zen mains, two no uh, noble swarm bells above. This is here mainly because obviously it's a quick killer and uh, the deck's just able to get even more of an advantage early on. Moving on, uh, two silent honors at Arc Knight. These are the main engine of your deck. I only run two because I find it's the only amount I can fit in. But to be honest you will never find a situation where you might need three. Now you may go, well I've got three of these, so what am I going to do if I come to it? Well I've got a third and I've got no use for it. Well, I've got Utopias in here, so I could go into a Utopia Ray Victory, or V as it is. Uh, I find it's just a really nice card to have and you obviously can shuffle it back with its own effect. So you can potentially use that twice as well if need be. Uh, you may decide to take one Utopia out, put one Silent Honors Arc Knight in, take one uh, Utopia Ray out and put in the third Silent Honors uh, Arc Dark Knight and that's perfectly fine, I can see why you do that, I just find it allows for a few more flexible plays from having them there. Uh, obviously uh, there's one Utopia 1, this is a great card in terms of just stopping a big field presence they've created. Uh, early on and you, it just puts you back in the game. There's so much in this deck which allows you to 
either keep control of the deck or just make sure that you've always got the card advantage which is just so good in this deck uh, and then finally uh, two silent honors dark knight which basically when this card is out it's almost game over really because if they try and take it out with the exception of a few cards like deep prism they're going to have trouble taking it out without you getting its effect of gaining the life points back and them just having to use so many cards to do it that it almost becomes so um, impossible to do that that it's just um, especially if Royal Decrees out because obviously it takes out the uh, chances of them going bottomless or them going into Dimensional Prison because they just won't be able to and so uh, it's worth mentioning that so a few cards I wanted to go over well, I haven't used, but you may want to consider instead as uh, viable options for cards you may want to use. Judgment of Thunder, I thought, you know, if you're wanting to use something trap-wise in order to hit them a little. This card's nice, I mean, it's kind of a one-for-one, one, so it's not great, but I don't know, you might like to play it. So it's something I thought I'd worth mentioning. Uh, Prohibitions I was using as a placeholder. Obviously, they're a nice side card as it is, so you you might want to keep them in. Uh, Pot of Duality. Obviously, this works nicely alongside Thunder Seahorses. They make the most of each other in terms of being able to. Uh, so obviously, you can't special summon, but obviously having them so doubled up on each other, you know, you get more out of it. I personally don't because I don't like the fact that I can't special summon, and so I want it to a bare minimum. And I can obviously play around a few seahorses here and there. That's not a big issue. But if I've got pots to uh, deal with as well, that can be a bit annoying. So that's why I haven't used it. But I'm personally quite a hater on pot duality. I just don't like the card in general. So that's why I haven't used it. Uh, lightweight tuning, like I said, it's a nice card in terms of giving your deck flexibility into going into more synchro play. If you wanted to play a more synchro heavy uh, so sort of side deck, uh, extra deck even then you could definitely use that card instead. Uh, one level 4 monster, uh, rank 4 I should say monster I should uh, mention is... Uh, no, I don't even know why this is there. Oh, crazy. Regardless. Uh, Barrow Room Man AA. -A. This is definitely a card worth mentioning. Uh, you can use this a lot outside of... Uh, maybe you don't like Prison much, you can take him out, put him in the Battery Man AAA. -A -A. And uh, it allows obviously some nice plays within itself because when it's someone you can bring out another one so you can make some really good plays off that. And uh, another one I thought I'd mention was Watt Cobra. You could obviously play Watt Giraffe as well alongside it. It's obviously when it's uh, it can attack directly when it does attack directly. You can add one Watt to you from your deck to your hand. So this card's quite nice in terms of uh, being able to keep that hand support going like I said. Obviously the main objective of the deck is to... Uh, go into them rank 4 please so that's something to keep in mind and finally a gauze you might want to play gauze uh if you're wanting to uh give yourself a little more protection when you're wanting to go for them fun to see uh horse plays you may decide to take out uh the one day of peace instead or maybe you don't like mind control in this day that's fine or maybe even the maxi i mean i use one maxi because i just find it works quite nicely within the deck uh, so that's the Silent Under Step Profile. I hope you've uh, liked it. If you have, I would like if you could leave a like or favourite. And uh, other than that, thanks for watching everyone and goodbye.